Welcome to the blending mode class and this lesson is for the darken blending mode. Now the darken blending mode compares the upper to the lower layers and uses the darker pixel to display. So just to clarify we're going to zoom in and each one of these is a pixel, each one of these uh, lines. And so it's going to compare the upper layer's pixel to the lower layer's pixel in, in each particular spot. And it's going to display only the darker. And so you will remember uh, that we shared, um, let's do uh, hit D so we have black and white in our foreground colors and if we open the color picker for black you can see its numbers are zero and if we open the color picker for white we're gonna see its numbers are uh, 255 and so if we um, get the green and open it up, you're going to see its numbers uh, here um, at uh, the highest ones at 128. I'm not quite sure how the science actually works when you have multiple numbers here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We just need to kind of have a general understanding. And so um, when we click on the gray, uh, it's 128. Uh, it's supposed to be 126, a 50% gray, but um, my graphic's a little bit off. Uh, so um, what we're going to do is change this upper layer to darken and see how it blends into the lower layer. So if we go uh, by our description, comparing the upper to lower layer, and it shows the darker pictures, we should expect the black to be darker than this green behind it. And um, the white is lighter, so uh, the green would be darker. So where it cuts off in between here, um, we're going to take a peek and I'm going to hit the darken blending mode and uh, as you can see there from it about right about the same in the center um, it shows those pixels determining all those are darker on the gray scale and um, it, it, the uh, actual gray it decided the background was darker um, and then from here over it showed the background because the background was darker. So from here over it determined the upper layer was darker and from here over it determined the lower layer was darker and so anything um, from the uh, upper layer that was lighter is not showing. It blends in. It disappears. And um, I'm trying to remember what we saw. Let's just peek because I really don't know the answer to this. This was uh, 128 and the background was also 128 in the middle. I don't know exactly, like I said, it has three uh, numbers here so I'm not quite sure how. Um, let's see, the gray disappeared and it has a brightness of 11. Or the the it has a gray has a brightness of 128, which is darker. But it, yeah, I don't know. It must have some sort of algorithm in there that I'm not going to go into it. We just need to know the basics. And um, here is uh, the texture we're going to use from this lesson. And and I want everybody to use the same texture. It's much more fun that way to see how people take the same texture and do different things with it because um, we all learn that way if you're using the same thing and you're seeing more samples with the same thing. And so this is going to be provided on my uh, on the guide, the website guide for this lesson. And I want to show with you share with you first what I did with it and here is my sample I'm wanting to do text on mine with a quote uh, 
and uh, you don't have to do that. You can just do your photos. And if you have a different size, if you're uh, just using this with your photo, you can grab the corners and resize the texture to fit whatever size your photo is. I'm happening to try to do mine in 8x8. So we have uh, my photo and we have our texture and I'm going to reconstruct this for you. When I put it on dark and this is what I got. Now it's not too bad because it turned to gray. Uh, it's gray and I uh, like the gray, kind of matching the gray pants, but um, I just wanted to play with it a little bit more to see what else I could get. And I want you, when you share in the class, to share your recipes or what you did to um, achieve the look. But I want you to only use the one paper. And so I duplicated it so that I had my backup saved. And I got my eyedropper tool and I grabbed uh, the brown, a brown from the carpet. I opened, I used Control U to open the hue and saturation. And I just clicked Colorize. And that made my texture paper, let's take it back to normal, a color from the background paper. And I said, well, hey, I kind of like that. That looks pretty nice. It gives me a nice border. Because if you look at our original paper, let's go back to the normal blending mode, it's darker in these areas around the edges and kind of lighter in the middle. And so also wherever these little specks are, these are actually pieces of tea that I, I put to make this uh, texture that I scanned in. Um, I forgot what flavor it was, but those are actually tea grounds all over there. So wherever those are, it should make your photo uh, speckled and dark. Uh, but where these lighter areas are in the middle, if you have the right photo, um, those will just blend in and disappear. But the darker areas around the edge will uh, uh, become darker. And so we see uh, that is what has happened here. So it kind of gives a grungy look to the outside. And um, then I decided, well, I didn't like the speckles showing up on my shoes <laughs> or on my, my skin uh, because the feet are kind of a focus in this. Uh, so I click to add a layer mask. And you'll remember black reveals white uh, white reveals, black conceals. So I've gotten my brush tool. I'm on black. I click to make sure I'm on the mask. And then I just simply masked out all those tea grounds on my feet because I really didn't like that. And then when I added my text, I decided I couldn't see my text very well. Now all those speckles, because this is carpeting, they're all there, but you just can't see them very well. And if that was on a, like a sky, it would make it real grungy looking. But um, I decided I couldn't uh, see my text very well. And so I put a stroke to it. And check out what it did. It put all those speckles on and, and the color um, that color that we made it, the brown color, put all of those speckles on my, I'm on, on my white border. If I turn off the, um, the texture and then turn it on, you can see how cool it made that. It made it a real great texture uh, for just a white piece of paper. If I wanted to use this as a white for texture for a piece of paper, and just wanted to use the inside areas with the, the pixels, with the, the tea grounds. That would be very cool. But um, uh, I went ahead. I wanted my text to be darker. And so I showed the double of the text. And uh, that was my image. I think it turned out pretty cool.
So we went from this plain to this kind of artistic cool. Now I have another sample. Um, I have my teacup here. I actually ended up having to, uh, it comes way out here, uh, the image, and I had to play with it to get my text to go around it and all be centered together. And here is the texture once again. And then I put it on darken and you can see what it does. Uh, it's really cool because um, except for uh, the dark areas in my photo, which would be the T itself, all the white areas get blended in. So you basically see the entire texture itself of the paper wherever our paper is white, wherever the photo is white. So you see the entire texture. Well, it wasn't very artistic, didn't really go with the background once again, or with the color of the T. And um, so once again, I duplicated it and I tucked the original away and I found a color from my T hit control U. Now we're going to be learning lots of little techniques as you see me playing with the photos. And these are just a few. And I hit colorize and I decided, well, oh yeah, that goes better, but I don't really like it. And so I started moving the hue slider until I found, you know, something I liked better. And um, I didn't move it very much. Now I thought about trying to use an adverse color. Uh, I didn't even go there. Maybe we could. Uh, but uh, you could use the adverse color of, of this. Uh, let's see. I'm, to make it easy, I am just going to fill that layer with the color. Hit Control I. It comes out to be a blue. And I could do Control J and color Control U and colorize that to a blue, and that might work too because uh, I have a lesson that shows um, the exact opposite on the color wheel from uh, the colors in your photo uh, are complementary colors, and um, I could have done that, but I still think I like this best, but. Uh, the same thing with the shoes. I have all those speckles, all that grunginess in my tea. And I, I decided I didn't really want that there. And so I clicked to add a layer mask and white reveals, black conceals. So I'm using black. And I pretty much you can see how I'm just getting that out of my glass. Actually, that top area I think I left. Uh, in, uh, let's exchange these. I think I left it there, but I just wanted it all out of my T. And I kind of have an outline. I, w I went ahead and left it in the handle. I like the way it blended in there. Now, I can't really see if I've covered every spot, so this is a, from a quick tip in the Fun Extras class. Hold down your Alt key click on the layer mask and you can see it. So I just kind of went back and, um, you know, made sure I had every area of my glass. Um, I don't want that one up there. And then I'm going to hold down my Alt key and click on the mask again. And now you see um, I have uh, this again back to the normal and this is pretty good but I decided that the background was a little overpowering and so I went ahead and I lowered the opacity just a little bit and so you see that's how I got I don't remember where my final one was we can just show it oh I lowered it pretty much I, I went back and forth and I lowered the opacity and um, there you have it. So if you stage a photo and you put it on a white background, you can really utilize this darkened one knowing exactly 
what's going to happen because anywhere that it's dark uh, on uh, which is almost everywhere <laughs> um, every everything on the texture is pretty is pretty much darker than white and so it will um, show up but your main subject that is um, got is darker uh, will not if that makes sense so I hope I said that correctly so you would understand it. So actually utilizing backgrounds like that um, and staging your photos on a piece of white or even a black if we're doing opposite, which we'll do that when we reach other blending modes. Um, so these are my samples and I really look forward to seeing what you're going to do with it.